I have a, a, a different kind of story than most. I am a married man. This man is putting his marriage on the line to be with his internet girlfriend. The only couple of things that she said on that subject is, don't bring her home, don't give her any money. But Mark has broken his promise to his wife and is sending money. I'm not a stupid guy. It's hard to say no. And they're so persuasive about it. I'll send you 5,000 bucks or, you know, whatever. Mark wants us to investigate his internet love by verifying this woman in these photos. This woman had become a habit, a daily habit. So I asked her to show me her ID. Who is this woman? How, how did she fit into my life? Join us as we uncover the truth. I haven't had sex in a long time. So this is not the moment where you leave your wife and you run off into the sunset. If I'm gonna be on YouTube, that's fine. I, I do not have a problem with it. We have discussed it. I, I'm hungry for someone, you know, and she's there. They found out what's going on. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. Um, Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Mark. I'm 61 years old. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm a marine engineer by trade. Uh, I work at sea. I also run my own business. I inspect uh, watercraft boats of all types. I enjoy my grandkids when I'm able to see them, as you can imagine. Um, I'm a Christian man. I have a, a, a different kind of story than most. I am a married man. We've been married for a long time. Our story is different. My wife has a, a disease that is has taken its toll on, on both of us um, and as us as a family. I began to realize that I was lonely. I was really not happy. We haven't slept in the same bed in over two years. We don't have that intimacy. And it's something that I crave. I'm 61 and, and I got a whole life to hit ahead of me. And I'm not trying to be mean or malicious or anything else. And, and by the way, my wife knows what I'm saying right now. It's our reality. After being married for nearly 15 years, Mark's wife has been confined to a bed due to health issues. During this challenging time was when Mark turned to online dating. I took the liberty of looking at stuff online, um, advertisements for, you know, single outlets and, and stuff like that. And I went to a lot of sites, a lot of sites. and. It was kind of fun. I didn't have to, you know, propose marriage or anything. I could just have fun online. And again, I was transparent with my wife and I talked to her about it. She said again, you know, whatever you do, make sure that it does not hurt you, me, or anybody else. I was at work off off shift. I heard my, my phone ding uh, with a notification and it was this woman whose name is Deanna Malvo. She came to me through uh, Ashley Madison. She sent a message along with her picture, of course. The uh, message was, I'm Deanna. We met on AM, which is Ashley Madison. I told her straight, I don't remember you. I don't know who you are. And she <laughs> immediately said, well, that's pretty rude of you because I remember you. And we started a dialogue after that so that was the first message uh, that we ever had together and immediately i felt like wow she's attractive next morning i get up and there's another message from me. so i message back yeah that was fun last night should uh you know message here and there and see see where this goes maybe this is what i'm here for is to meet People like this, I didn't know anything about her. All I knew was that there was a, an immediate attraction on my part. That led to daily phone calls, which led to a video chat. And there was talk of a meeting up. And I said, okay, well, let's see where this goes. She's slender, dark, long hair, brown eyes, light olive skin. She was from Indianapolis. She is a beautician, she said, but she is a, a beautiful woman. Our conversations were kind of like, what are you doing today? What do you have planned? 
oh yeah, I'm going to work or I'm at work now. You know, what did you eat for dinner? During the conversation, we found out that we had a lot of the same interests. I did discuss taking her to a uh, convention that I have in March, uh, to which she readily agreed. She said, yeah, sure, no problem. Buy the ticket, let me know where to be. There were times when I felt like I had known her for a, a really long time. You know, we had discussions about my work. If I was frustrated at work, I would let her know because of the way we we did talk. Oh, she was bubbly. She had a, a really upbeat personality. By this time, it had become a habit. This woman had become a habit, a daily habit. If I didn't hear from her in the morning, I would like, well, where is she? What's going on here? She's seeking a man to provide for her. And I'm seeking someone to, you know, fill that void that I have. Um, and it worked. Real or not, imagined or not, it was working. I'm just an affable guy that people generally feel comfortable around. I was kind of hoping that it was just, you know, my likability. As Mark grew closer to Deanna, the bond with his wife weakened. Their constant text messages kept them connected day in and day out. My job, if you can call it that, as a husband is to take care of my wife. She knows about Deanna. We have spoken about her. The only couple of things that she said about on that subject is don't bring her home, don't give her any money. I said, I never expected this to happen between us. My wife and I were still talking. We're still, you know, having breakfast together and all that stuff when I was home. Um, it did not rip us apart. Despite Mark's online chats with Deanna, his wife remained loyal. However, things took a drastic turn when Deanna started asking for money, leaving Mark skeptical about their relationship. Eventually, she came out and asked for money. You know, I'm embarrassed to ask you. This isn't something that I normally would ask someone I just met, but I really need some money. That was $140, I think, for food for her kids. So I went ahead and did that and sent it off to her. I'm not a stupid guy. And I know when to, when you know, to say enough is enough. But there were more instances where she asked for more money. The next time that she asked was about two weeks later. It was Christmas. She had asked for money for um, Christmas dinner. There she, she got the money and ended up saying thank you. That wasn't too bad. It was food for her and her mom. Um, it was food for Christmas dinner. Um, oh, there was a time when her dog was sick. Oh, and she wanted to buy Christmas presents too. That was another one. I sent her, I think at Christmas, I sent her that hundred bucks and that was the last time. The next time was for the dog being sick. It's hard to say no. When, when someone that you're becoming to to get to know and they're saying you know i need money for my sick dog or something like that and they're so persuasive about it, it it's like all right i'll send you five thousand bucks or you know whatever mark found himself footing deanna's bills from groceries to holiday gifts to pet medication with each payment he grew more uncertain about her true identity and intentions I had her do all of the the, <laughs> this, the silly stuff that I saw online, which is, you know, hold up two hands, do this posture, all that kind of stuff, which she did. I wanted more proof that she was who she said she was. So I asked her to show me her ID. Two, three minutes later, she produced her ID for me. I, I'm a really skeptical guy. I don't ever take things on face value, which is why I began digging in the first place. So I wasn't, I still wasn't convinced. When I told her that I wasn't convinced, she got irate. She said, well, I've sent you everything you've asked me to do. I've done everything you've asked me to do. If you're not satisfied with that, then this isn't going anywhere. I'm, I'm out. Despite everything, Mark holds hope that Deanna is genuine, 
hoping to deepen their relationship, and he yearns for the truth. I've become wrapped up in this and where it you know, boggles my mind as to who is this woman? How, how does she fit into my life? Who is she? We're still conversing almost daily. She sent me a message. She said, I hope you got home safely. Have a good time at home. We'll talk when we talk. It almost sounds like a like a a normal <laughs> relationship. The I love you, I love you had had started um, as well. My sex drive is still pretty high. I haven't had sex in a long time, like seven years. I feel like I am missing out on on some of the best times of my life. Now, if we meet up someday and it is who this is her the real her and there is a gigantic spark there that's a discussion for for that time i want to know that this person that i'm supposed to be getting to know is not taking advantage of me i like this person i want to like this person i want to know that what she has put forth so far you know i could bank on that i could say yeah okay damn I, I doubted her and I shouldn't have. She's real. And, you know, potentially someone that I'm around a lot in the future. You know, I mean, if I'm going to be on YouTube, that's fine. I, I do not have a problem with it. We have discussed it. Um, but as much information as I can put out there about myself without compromising my significant other's personal life, the better off I am. I have been transparent with my, my wife. If you found yourself in a similar situation to Mark and you want to know if the person behind the other computer screen is being truthful about their identity, reach out to us. Share my story at socialcatfish.com. We can help you find the answers you need. After a few days, we were ready to break down why this couldn't be real to Mark. While he waited to hear back from us, his wife was telling him every day that none of this was true. But he wanted to hear it from us. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thanks for joining us, man. I mean, as soon as I saw your initial interview, it left me wondering what you want out of this. Let me be clear on, on one point. My wife and I have not had intimate relations in seven years. Um, she got sick and where I'm very sympathetic. Over time, I, I got um, antsy. I wanted to go do my thing. I'm still a healthy man. And, and uh, be that as it may, I kind of courting this gal. Um, and that developed into an online relationship. There are a couple of times I wanted to shut it down. And I told her as much, and then it ended up rekindling, and that has not stopped. So what I thought I wanted more than anything was companionship, a friendship, a deep friendship, something that could develop. I don't have anybody that I confide in other than my wife. Um, ended up allowing this to continue. What I wanted in the end was just that. I wanted somebody to talk to, somebody, some companionship, somebody to confide in. Um, I did it maybe the wrong way, but I'm entrapped now. Kind of don't want it to stop. I'm just, I'm hungry for someone, you know, and she's there and she's receptive, it seems like. But what is the real reason you contacted us in a nutshell? I spent money out of my pocket. I spent my time and my voice. I spent time on my um to, on my phone texting her what i do want is clarity i want that person to be very clear about who she is and if it's uh, worth pursuing any type of relationship with you know friendship wise or anything else i want to know what i am dealing with because i don't like wasting my breath um, my time is limited. In one breath, 
you are in a romantic relationship with this person online. And in another breath, you're telling me I'm not seeking, you know, a relationship after we reveal to you if she's real or not. That's confusing to me. I actually disclosed to her everything about my family life, everything that I have sat down and discussed this with my wife. And, you know, the whole nine yards. So my question is, what do you want, Mark? A, I want to know that um, that she is who she says she is or not. I want to be able, if she is who she says she is, uh, Drew, I'd like to be able to uh, continue conversing with her if she's okay with that, but not on a romantic level. So does your wife know that you're meeting with us today? Uh, she, like I said, she's ill. Um, she can't make it upstairs. And we, she said, this is your thing. Do, do what you're going to do, but I, I don't want any part of it. So this is not the moment where you leave your wife and you run off into the sunset with... It's not going to happen. And Deanna knows that. I told her that in, in many texts that I was not willing to abandon my wife. I'm not going to uh, forsake her. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. She knows that. Make sure you stick around until the end. We'll break down to Mark what we found. We contacted everyone in your case. Mark will explain his intentions with Deanna. Actually disclosed to her everything about my family life. Everything that I have sat down and discussed this with my wife. And he'll break the news to his wife. That they found out what's going on. <laughs> go ahead, laugh. Um, we set up another call with Mark and we were ready to go over everything that we found. Mark, we contacted everyone in your case. The first thing we did was run a phone number search on the number that you've been texting with Deanna on. We were able to locate another phone number that was under the same phone line as that same number. And we gave that number a call. Her name is Cassandra. She answered the phone. We told her who we were and why we were calling. We call a second time and she got hostile. Whoever is behind this Deanna profile knows Cassandra personally because they're on the same phone line. Um, so you're, you're, you're not saying that Cassandra is the same persona as Deanna? There's no way that we can tell you that off of okay. the information that Cassandra gave us. But we do know that these are not VoIP numbers. These are actual phone lines and Cassandra is paying the bill. In your experience, does this fall in line with other um, scams or does it even sound like one or do you know? Do you have any idea? So, I mean, that's going to take us to this photo. Yeah, I asked her for it. Yep. There have been many times when I have been very hesitant to accept the person who she says she is. So I have, had, I have asked her for proof. Of, of that. Um, we zoomed in on the ID and we ran a search on the address on the ID. And we actually yeah. found out that Deanna doesn't live at that address. So when we ran the search on the house, the address, um, it was actually sold to a couple by the name of Eric and Jennifer in 2020. So they've been living there for four years? Yes. Okay. What do you think about her lying to you about that? It pisses me off mainly because it makes me know um, that if she lied about that, she lied about everything most likely. We were able to match the ID that she was holding and essentially all that ID is, is uh, it's a sample template on the internet. Okay. When we looked at this image, it already stuck out to us it, that it's been altered. The original photo, if you put them side by side, this is the actual image. Do you see where the ID was photoshopped in? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What's going on through your mind? Well, I, I mean that a lot of my suspicions have been realized right now. Um, that 
I'm not crazy. I I have been suspecting foul play for months, um, and I I think that my feelings and fears have been validated. Do you think that this relationship that you had with uh -huh. Deanna was worth putting your marriage in jeopardy? No. No, not at all. Um, I am lucky that I have a very understanding wife who will, we're never going to separate. We're, we're just not. Um, something really bad would have to happen. It's not going to happen. So I am lucky in that respect. Um, it did teach me more about, you know, the fact that we've been married for 17 years and maybe I got a little bit bored and lonely um, is no excuse to do stuff like this. It, it does. It's not worth it. The next information that we looked into was the cash app profile that you were sending money to. Yes. Did she ever explain why there's a picture of a black woman on her account? She did, which was interesting, too. Um, I questioned her on that, and she said, oh, that was one of my favorite teachers. She since passed away, and I just have her up there as a reminder. That's That was her explanation. We ran an image search on that woman in the Cash App profile photo, and we found that her name is Deanna. Uh, we were able to find her Facebook account. She's not a teacher. She lives in Texas and has a lot of ties back to Ghana. I spent time, I spent money. I, I, like I said, as I said, it started out as something that I didn't realize was going to turn into later on, which was an ongoing online relationship. So we ran a reverse image search on all the pictures you sent us. Um, we were able to confirm that those pictures are Carly Gray. She has no connection to the phone number that you're communicating with. She has no connection to this romance scam at all. Okay, well that that's good. Um, that 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 is good. I'm I'm glad to hear that. We found all of her official accounts, so uh, her OnlyFans, Twitter, YouTube, website. She is very active on social media, so she's constantly updating all of her profiles with new content and. If you're not talking to one of these profiles, you are not speaking to the real Carly Gray. I called you, I got, I contacted you because I wanted that validation. Um, you have given that to me. Um, I know that my thought processes were not wrong at times. At other times, especially when I was having a few drinks or something, yeah, I kind of wanted that to be real. That's how they get you. This woman, that's obviously attractive and you know you seeking some kind of companionship and you being lonely and you wanting to believe it like you i'm sure you saw all of these photos and the id and 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 the cash app and you knew that it was false to begin with but the yeah. thing that gets you on is going through a rough time in a marriage and you wanting this to be so real that you will look past the, the red flags. And we genuinely believe that a lot of these photoshops are so bad by design. I don't get that. They're looking for somebody that's willing to look past everything. I understand. If they were perfect, then it probably wouldn't work. Uh, they, they're looking for someone to put in their inventory and, and that's going to work out, you know, that's, that they know is probably going to be worth their time and energy, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So are you going to continue to seek outside relationships? No. No. Is your plan now that you know that, that all of this is fake? Really would like to do right now is just concentrate on being Mark, you know, the real Mark and not not having to worry about looking for any outside influences, any um, or these negative influences. I don't want to have to guess at who I'm talking to, at least in this context. Um, I want to present myself as I normally have been um, in the past, which has been pretty positive. So, 
Well, Mark, I hope that we were able to provide what you were looking for um, when you initially reached out to us. Still slightly confused on what you were looking for in this whole thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we brought you some clarity and also answered your questions and you know you got what you were looking for. Uh, you, you absolutely brought that um, clarity and, and uh, validation to me. Um, I, I, I've tried to answer a couple of those questions as honestly as I could. If it didn't come across that way, I apologize. That's on me. That's that. I do appreciate what you guys do, not just for me, but for other people who fall prey to this type of scam. Um, it, it's an honorable thing to do. I appreciate it. Carly Gray is an adult film actress with tons of fake accounts all over the internet. She's a very public person whose face is frequently seen in scams. Mark did end up coming to terms with being scammed by this fake profile and decided to go downstairs and let his wife know what we had told him. She didn't want to come on camera, but her reaction was very interesting. She's probably in her chair right now, maybe. Hey, honey. Um, I just wanted you to know that they found out that she's fake, completely fake. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. Um, she's fake. Uh, she's in Texas. She does this for a living. It's probably a money mule and uh, with ties to Ghana. Yes. All right. I right, say that. Ma'am, do you have anything that you would like to say to Mark? I'm a <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Well, yeah, like I say, it was hard for me to believe that he even do it, that he would even consider, you know, believe in someone like that because we had talked about it and I told him these people can really suck you in and really make you believe what they're telling you. And uh, so, but I just told him, like I say, I can't believe that he actually did it. Yeah, I was very upset with him, very upset. Well, you didn't ever say that he was that upset, so... Well, <laughs> anyway, that's that. You and Mark have an open relationship in this way? Oh, no, no. Because like I say, it was just hard for me to believe that he would actually believe someone like that. And it angered me. I mean, it really did, you know, that he did that. Apologize, Mark. I am sorry. I come. She knows how, how sorry. And we've talked about yes, this part Yes, we before. have. I was open and honest with her from day one. Yes. Um, I did tell her that this is ongoing. Uh, the conversations were ongoing. Um, and I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I wanted to contact you to find out. But honey, I am sorry. And, and you know, you mean the world to me. We, we have a lot of history. No, I know. Well, we have a very happily marriage for 16 years. And we've always been open with each other. And as soon as this happened, I mean, he came and told me about it. Yeah, I'm and never going to bullshit my wife. She'll she'll read through it in a heartbeat. Yeah, I know yeah. him very well. Yeah. But, yeah, honey, yeah, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you too, honey. I love that for both of you. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. Did we help you, Mark? Oh, yeah, absolutely. A, a couple of things. A, you, you did teach me that I'm not imagining. Um, when, when I tell myself that this isn't real, that it really wasn't real, that it was fake, that wasn't made up, and also that, uh, that you were there for me, that you did help me. I don't have to worry about any anything anymore neither does my wife uh, we're we're on solid ground we're we're going to continue our life and we're good again uh, i certainly do appreciate everything you've done